everyone. This is uh, David Jelks, and uh, and I had the really uh, the great pleasure of actually uh, speaking with Cassie uh, Al Alnick. Is that right, Alnick? It is. It is. You, Sorry. you said it correctly. It's Alnick, yes. right? Yes, Absolutely, yes. you got it. Yeah. Uh, yes, I'm so excited. You know, and uh, I know there many you of you. Out, I know many of you out there. You look at somebody's name, and you're going, "Okay, I'm going to butcher this." But we actually crossed paths. Um, uh, just in the last couple of weeks, actually, it's been quite recently, uh, where we actually, we, we've known of each other, but never actually spoken to each other. Correct. Um, and uh, so just a little bit about Cassie before we start, because they, again, uh, to create some context about the conversation, who she is and, and why we're speaking. Um, uh, she's, now, she's an author of a book called Borrow My Tribe, which, uh, and again, a lot, a lot of your background is quite new to me, which is wonderful. Uh, she's a spiritual life coach, uh, a Reiki master, an inspirational speaker, um, a New Yorker, which is awesome all by itself. <laughs> and, go uh, Rangers, go Rangers. <laughs> and she's an athlete, right? She's been an athlete. You've been an athlete all your life. Uh, uh, I, 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 ha I have actually, David. Um, I had gotten a full basketball scholarship to a Division One college in New York. Um, and then after that, I had gone right into uh, training and uh, I started lifting yeah. um, due to an injury actually in college. Right. And um, so I started competing in the NPC and oh my goodness, I'm going to date myself now. Are you right. ready? <sighs> 1991. Right. And, um, and I, my last... Um, my last competition was 2017, but in 2015, I did the Arnold Classic wow. in the physique yeah. category. You know, there was two things when I was reading your bio, two things uh, I, I, I uh, kind of stood out for me. One, you were, <laughs> you were talking about these, uh, the, the workouts the coach would give you as, you know, as these, this really, and it was, it was, they weren't these, they weren't hellish, gruelish workouts. They were life lessons. Right. You, oh, right. Yeah. oh my gosh. You know, ab absolutely. You know, everything, everything can be, no matter what we in, we're in the middle of, David, right. um, we can really see everything. If we choose, right. we can see it as, um, you know, a lesson or a blessing, right? right. We can go back and forth. Um, and again, that's one of those things that, that I always try to remind my clients, if they're going through a tough moment, right. I bring them back to a moment where they, they found something where it was, you know, they learned something, right. they found their blessing in their lessons. So it, it gets people to really get in back into their moment to try to find the blessing in what they're in now, what, you yeah. know, what life situation they're in now. Well, and the, and the second thing that popped out at me was the, uh, the word titanium. Now uh, you're talking about, oh, yeah. When, so yeah. when you're going, cause you I got, love that. you got, you got, you became, you were injured um, uh, yes. as an athlete and then you, uh, mm -hmm. you missed the opening season. This 1989, was it? Oh my, it's so yeah. scary to even hear those numbers, but, but it's all right. Let me, let me just take a moment to breathe, okay. breathe that in. I'm like, okay, let's go back. It's, it's all good. Listen, I love, I love my age. I love it. I, I own it all. I own yeah. it all. Well, so, own, well. so yeah. And, and actually, uh, David, so in, in, in 1980, May of 88, I was, I was getting ready for my upcoming junior season, right. uh, playing basketball. I was on a bike and a car hit me. So I had to have surgery and I was, I was uh, doing rehab. And then in January of 89 was when I decided I needed to get into a gym right. to, to take it up several notches. And um, yeah, it was, it was incredible. Uh, you know, you know, from all the training you've done over your lifetime and, and people you've worked with, you know, that when someone starts out, you know, the first week or two, I mean, the body, the physical body is not changing right. and, and, I wasn't special. My body wasn't changing. But what I noticed in the first two weeks, by the end of the second week of moving a piece of iron from point A to point B, was that I felt this titanium beam. It's as if someone handed, didn't even hand it to me. They just shoved it in my being, in the yeah. center of me. And I looked at life and went, you know, friggin' bring it. Just bring it, whatever you got, yeah. bring it, because yeah. I got it. And, and that feeling of empowerment was something that I, it woke me up and I right. decided, oh my God, I need to teach this. Right. And, and, and I needed to teach the physicalness to get the empowerment piece. Right, and, right. and again, of course, body transformation then happens after that if you choose. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. That, can you tell that jazz is me yeah. up? Like, even going, I'm like, oh my God, I remember that. It was great. Well, and again, and, and I thought those two points were really quite relevant to our conversation that we're getting into, because what it shows is that, um, you know, a big part of life are stressors and very big stressors. Yes. And, but how you arrive at the stressors, the, the mental bandwidth that you go into the stressors with, what you decide to make it mean and how you evolve past that point. And there was two very poignant times in your history that that you chose to view it as something 
you know, uh, something uh, uh, very, very different from, let's say the average person would say, you know, I, I miss, you know, I, I, can't, I can't play basketball. I, I'm not in my career. This is a failure. My life is ruined. Um, mm -hmm. but, it, but two, again, and they just leaped out at me because, again, they were really relevant to our, the context of conversation and speak yes. to who you are and why you do what you do. But, it, but it's, it's available to everyone. That, that capacity, yes. yeah, and, that, and we're wired, we're wired for hardship, and you know, and I don't think we understand mm -hmm. that, we don't appreciate how resilient we are, and um, and again, that was the beauty of your story and your path to where you are today, and of course, that that uh, that innate uh, understanding is the gift that, of course, that you hand down to your clients, I'm sure. Uh, absolutely, and and one, it's funny um, that that idea of how to look at a, a life situation that's showing up for you. I didn't just create that. I have to tell you, uh, you know, my mother actually taught me that lesson because at the age of nine, I remember coming home and I was so upset because it was just like the toughest day of my life, you know, at nine, what could really happen at nine, right? right? right. So, but anyway, she said, oh, don't worry about it, Cass. It's okay. Nine right. can be tough. 10 can be better. And this went on year after year. I, I kid you not. 15, <laughs> mom, 15 is tough. Don't worry. 16 is going to be better. And then at 19, I'm in college and I came home. I'm like, mom, is it ever going to get any easier? And she looks at me, we sat down, we had a cup of coffee at that point. See, there's the New Yorker. Yeah, I had yeah. to bring in the word coffee for you. <laughs> there you go. But anyway, I sat down with her and I'm like, mom, does it ever get any easier? And she sat and she looked me right in the eyes and she said, listen, Cass, life is always going to present you with joyful moments. But along with those joyful moments, challenges are always going to show up. It is how you choose to look at those challenges that right. makes all the difference. And, and at 19, to have that idea like just seared into my heart about you, can, you have the choice to look at your life, look at whatever is coming up yeah. for you in your movie, which is called life, yeah. or your game, whatever, you want to, whatever word you want to use. You have, the, you have the moment to sit and just look at it and go, how do I want to look at this? Yeah. You know, is it, is it happening to me or am I going to try to find the opportunity in this to then get out of it better than I was when I came into it? Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. Well, All and right. that's actually a great segue into my first question for you. Um, yes. Now, uh, we're obviously in a very unusual, another unusual uh, <gasps> shift in humanity. Um, and, and again, yeah. it's not, it's not unprecedented. I mean, it's not like this is the first time something like this has ever occurred. There's, uh, there's, uh, right. you know, there's various uh, segments of time. I mean, 2007 was another massive global shift in, in our uh, human consciousness and sense of stability. What do you, what do you see? I mean, from your, your point of view, again, and of course, speaking to somebody who sees the world a little bit differently, perhaps, than the average mm. person who, who's still trying to figure out their perspective. They're trying to figure out with a, you know, they're trying to generate a mature and spiritual perspective. What is, what is your vantage point? Like, what do you see from New York? <laughs> And you're, uh, in the, you're in the epicenter, of course, of all this, this, well, this chaos, especially in the U.S. Well, it's, it's funny. I, I am and I'm not. So right. I am a New Yorker. I, I did grow up in the city, but right. I do live in upstate New York. But when I traveled, when all of this, when all this went down, right. um, and I traveled outside of New York to go stay with my mother in South Carolina, did the distance learning. I've got two boys, uh, 14 and 12. Right. Um, I went down to her community in South Carolina and I actually had a sheriff show up at my mother's door to remind me, a New Yorker, that I needed to do, I know, look at those eyes. I wow. see you like, oh my God. But again, everyone, you know, that yeah. gave me another perspective because everyone, everyone was viewing this very differently. And again, I've, I've got to embrace and, and really be okay with how everyone was viewing it. So there are a lot of people in my mom's community that were older and they were very scared. They were very scared. Um, so again, there was, uh, you know, I looked at it and I just saw it from, from where it was coming from right. and said, thank you, sir. And, you know, between you and I and who's ever watching, I'm a hockey mom. Right. So to tell me to stay put for 14 days was, um, I was good with that. Right. <laughs> so, but, but again, it was, again, yeah. it, I was viewed as a New Yorker right. from, the, from the center city, but I do live upstate. Um, yeah, I, I have to share with you that um, I, I am looking at this and I'm trying to help a lot of people and I appreciate, I know I didn't get a chance to say this in the beginning. Thank you, David, for giving me this opportunity to, to have this platform to, to share how I am looking at this and, and how I'm moving forward and how I'm helping my clients move forward. Because um, a, a lot of people, as you said, they're kind of in, I use the terminology, you know, you're in the game, 
you're looking at something from above the game. Again, I'm an athlete. I'll always right. be an athlete. So there I am. So there are a lot of people right now that are, that are looking at this and they're in the game. You know, they're, they're watching the news and, and they're just in the emotional piece of it and they're in it and they want it. They're, we're being talked to about how to keep our bodies healthy, you know, in the physical realm. Right. Um, but like you said in our last conversation, no one's talking about mental health. No one's talking about perception and how we could look at this differently. Um, so for me, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at this from above the game and I'm seeing it as just another life situation. And based on what my mother taught me, I'm looking at this life situation for an opportunity for growth. Right. And when I'm talking with people, my clients, my friends, you know, just anyone, people in the supermarket that happened the other day, um, I'm sharing, I'm sharing with them this idea about the opportunity to clean up. You know, right. it's a clean up. Like, you know, you remember on the physical level in the game, what did everybody do when, when we were kind of told we had to stay put? I don't know about you in Canada, but everybody went to Lowe's. Right. I mean, Lowe's, everybody was buying paint. They were buying things to fix up their house, you know, so they had to go in. They had to go into their home, but on a physical level, they decided to, you know, fix up their home, their right. physical home. So my perspective is, you know, how can we look at this opportunity to go within this home? You know, we're living, we are, I, my belief is that, and what's true for me is that we are these beautiful souls that have chosen to step into this human masquerade costume. Right. You know, and again, where you take that for me, it's, you know, like what lessons, you know, what do we, what do we learn in this time round? You know, we all came in here to learn some things, right. And we learn through, uh, you know, challenges, right? right. So, you know, it's an opportunity to go within and clean up house here, right. you know, clear out, you know, you mentioned before I'm a Reiki master. Yes. I, I work a lot with chakras with people. Um, this is an opportunity. I've, I'm finding a lot of people that are, you know, we are in root chakra time here. You know, this is about like building a solid foundation. Root chakra is right underneath your tailbone there, right. you know. However, I'm trying to find a clean way of talking about that. Because <laughs> it's kind of tough to talk about root yeah. chakra without yeah, yeah. getting crazy. But anyway, yeah. you know, that's all about taking care of your physical, your physical needs. You know, I, I exist, uh, you know, I am safe, I am financially secure, you know, all of those things. So I'm trying to help people and support people at looking when they share with me what's coming up with them in the game. I'm trying to ask them some powerful questions to get them to go within right. so they can find their own insights about what they've got to work on. Right. And then we go from there, right. you know, so. Oh, yeah, well, well I, I will stress there is always, um... Well, it's no different than the, in the, let's say, the field of sports, right? Somebody will come up and say, um, listen, you know, my, my knee is an issue and uh, it's normally not a problem. And it's not a problem, right. you know, and, uh, you know, it hasn't bothered me for three months. Well, what have you been doing for three months? Well, not much. All right. So right. As, soon as, they, as soon as you apply pressure to any structure, the structure of our life, the structure of our physical yes. self, the physical structure of a building, you apply pressure to it, constant pressure, the faults will show up. And yes. yeah, so, and I, you know, and I thought, you know, this is a great opportunity. Uh, if, if the financial um, uh, uncertainty is an issue, then, then perhaps it's an opportunity to actually get some financial guidance and don't live so close to the, uh, you know, to your paycheck to paycheck and uh, your credit cards, you know, don't max them out and a great opportunity to show some financial maturity. Um, and the same thing with your physical health. If, if you're so concerned about, uh, you know, uh, um, the, the current conditions taking you out, then, you know, again, back to what you're saying about cleaning up the physical self, like go inside and say, listen, I really, you know, there's people that rely on me. There's people that care and love me. And, and, and if I'm on the edge with my health due to my own choices, my own, uh, mm -hmm. let's say, uh, and sometimes it's unconscious. I don't think, you know, nobody is, uh, uh, nobody is consciously negligent of their health, right? We had this weird right. compart compartmentalization thing that we do yes. inside of our head. And, but it's a great opportunity not, not, to, not to be afraid. But, well, I guess fear is not necessarily a bad thing. If it wakes you up and gives you an right. opportunity to make a different decision, right? Um, but yeah, it, it, is a, it can be a great awakening. Uh, and, and again, that's you know, the purpose of this conversation. So that these things that, you know, the, you get this mass controversy where everybody is mad if you do wear one or if you don't wear one. Right. And if we can remove the, remove the judgments and just say this is an, an incredible opportunity to grow grow ourselves and if you don't have the answer inside of you but you know that there's definitely growth is uh 
uh, is necessary for your continued survival and happiness or whatever that looks like for you, then, then there's people you could talk to. And there's this extraordinary oh. people on the planet that just want nothing more than to see people grow and, and not actually have to spend 30 years doing what we've tried to figure out over 30 years and let's let's yeah. fast track it and let's you know it's not it's not like you don't have to do all the work but you don't you don't have to take as many kind of blows to the head along the way and right and, and again well, I, yeah i'm sorry david no go ahead finish i'm a new yorker i, I butt in yeah. every once in a while well, well no <laughs> sorry but but, but it, again it was just the it was the nature of uh, when i <laughs> uh, you know a month ago when i decided to put that program together just breathe yeah. Uh, because it was it was really concerning, you know, and that there wasn't enough conversation around mental health. There wasn't enough conversation mm. around uh, the increase in uh, severity of autoimmune symptoms, which of course elevate when stress becomes elevated. Yes. Um, you know the the idea, you know, the concern about the increase in suicides and drug abuse mm. and you know addictions and abuse and all these things. And so, well, okay, but yeah, we had that. We're all afraid of that. But what? But what? What are some of the answers? And there wasn't really a lot being out there. And so I found that right. very disheartening, like really disheartening. And, and not to point any fingers because there's so much stuff going on at that, the level of, uh, of medicine and politics that I, I just have no idea. So I, I can't even begin to yeah. guess what, what's going on there. But I figured, well, you know, there, it, there's an expression, if it's to be, it starts with me and, and, and initiating right. conversations. What can I do as an individual uh, who doesn't have any political clout, who's not a, you know, I'm not a licensed medical physician, but I, uh, but I am a, a fairly wide awake, caring human being, and I don't want to mm -hmm. see people suffer unnecessarily. So, absolutely. And to go back to what you had said, you know, there there is a lot of help out there. Um, there are, you know, there are a number. We talked the other day about, you know, all the different things that that people could do, and right. and here's one of the things, you know, but but yet that can also keep you frozen. Right. Like if you're sitting in what you're sitting in. You can you can be frozen because there are too many choices, right, right, right. right? So you know, for me, what I do for a living, I could live anywhere in the world, and then it goes well. That's a little too big for me to you know yeah. choose, right? So you know, if you just said, well, you can only live here, I could pick a house in a neighborhood anyway. So with all those choices out there, one of the things, David, that I that I also share with with my clients is that everything that they need to know in order to move forward i mean they're getting hit with whatever challenge they're getting hit with it is part of a spiritual curriculum again that's that's the headspace right. i come from like you had right. talked earlier you brought up you know my past and right. uh you know challenges that i came uh you know came from and i i just believe that you know again if if this really is our classroom then then whatever's showing up for us is is we're not going to take it personally because right. that's different. We're not going to take it personally, but it's personal in the way that, you know, it's something that's showing up for us because out of my two eyes, I'm looking at the life situation one way and you might look at something, same thing a little differently. Right. So what I, what I share with clients and, and hopefully support them with is that that go within is so important. And, and I took you through a, an exercise to really connect right. with your next best version. That's a conversation that you could have. You, once you connect with that next best version, you can talk with that person, right. um, your future self. You know, you can go in and speak with your, your guides. Whenever I sit down with anyone for a session, I, I always ask permission to, to take someone through this moment where they get to call in their higher power, whatever they might call that, right. the guides, as well as anyone that's passed over that's here for their greatest and highest good. You know, we have all of this we have all these resources on a spiritual level that you know it's like the fan club they're behind us and they're like right. just ask me right. you know could you just tap in and you know call yeah. on me because i'm right here um but everything you need to know everyone that you need to have show up for you they're there right. and you can you can ask for that like show me and i love i love this um when i when i've said for myself and then i've shared it you know show me what is just beyond my vision I don't know what I need. I don't know. You know, just show me what's just beyond my vision. And I'm telling you, David, like I know my name. It is always shown up. It is right. always shown up. So, so that's something that, that people, you know, people can certainly do to find what's going to be right for them. Right. Does that make sense? Uh, yeah. Well, you know, what comes to mind is a, uh, a quote by uh, Tony Robbins. Uh, when he, I, I watch him interview somebody and they say, I don't know. I said, okay, but if you did know, yeah, so, right. If you didn't know what would it be? 
and 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 fear has a way of actually removing our peripheral vision like fear fear right. that you can't see anything out here it's just this immediate thing in front of me right. and 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 there's no there the, was the limited capacity to reason beyond it and and the idea being is that if we can lower that threshold of fear and anxiety then there's all sorts of intelligent intelligence and wisdom sitting on the mm -hmm. peripheral but you we can never yes. see it if we just keep getting jacked up and jacked up and jacked up day to day um, you know, one of my things that, that uh, I don't, uh, I don't have cable in my house and I rarely, if ever, follow the news, but I, I, I remember in March, I could actually feel the weight and it wasn't, you know, my life didn't have that much uncertainty. My health was good. My career was still mm. functioning, but the weight of, of global uncertainty, it, it was actually, yes. it felt pretty crushing. I, I was actually quite surprised when I sat mm. down one day and going, wow, like this is heavy. And, yes. and, and, and I'm not really, I'm not struggling at the level that so many people are, were struggling out in the world. I go, man, this is my, this is, this is what I'm experiencing just as a, uh, as a bystander to this, 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 uh, this world mm -hmm. event. I couldn't imagine what it'd be like right in the middle of it, right? Where there is health challenges and uh, you have right. had, had a loved one that, that, that was, um, that unfortunately had passed on during this whole process or mm -hmm. somebody that had lost their career and, so, you know, again, it just be, became something where, you know, it's instead of actually hopping on the, 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 um, the, the um, taking a judgmental view of everyone saying, well, of course, you know, you got sick because look what you've done to your health. And of course, you know, it's very easy to drop into that lane, you know, from, uh, but it just, but I was so, you know, but I really wanted to figure out how do we, how do we encourage people to become more resilient? And, uh, you know, and New Yorkers, of course, are always known for the resiliency. But but he, but he, yeah. we're, we're gonna we're gonna get some we're gonna get some some messages here because we're like bringing that up a lot. I know. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, it's, it's, Listen, I, one of the one of these days I'm gonna go out west. I want to be in Arizona, you know. Yeah. But that's <laughs> that's that's uh, my hippy dippy self, you know. Well, but uh, but yeah, the resiliency, like you said, and and it's uh, there's um, Angela Duxworth, you know, the book Grit, right, you right. know, is yes. you know it talks about it talks about grit and it talks about um, you know what you know what are the you know, can you, can you make it when a, when a challenge, can you go the long, the, can you go the distance? Cause grit is not about, grit's not about, you know, just in the moment it's hard, but you right. do it. It's about the long, it's about the long term. And, and again, who knows, this could be an opportunity for people to work on, you know, work on that grit if they choose. Yeah. I mean, who yeah. knows, you know, what, what this could be everybody, it's showing up differently for everybody. My yeah. friend Tamara had said at one point, you know, we're all in the same storm, but we're, we're, we're rowing in different boats. Right. And, and like you said, you know, you had a moment where, you know, you heard that voice in the mind of like the judgment. Well, of course, right. you know, of course you're going to get like, right. So that's, but that's you just being a human, yeah, of course. but you know, but then you realized it and then you played above the game and you, you know, brought yourself into your spiritual being and, and, and pulled away from that and just kind of saw everyone from a non, non judgmental yeah. place. Um, but again, like I said, you know, everyone, everyone is, is, is dealing with their challenges. And, and I guess, uh, you know, it's, um, being in whatever you're in and talking about grit and talking about challenges, um, getting, getting grounded. I talked to mentioned earlier, you know, all about root chakra, right? You know, it's, it's about, you know, that's your ground. You know, if you're thinking about building a house, you want to, you want to build that on some solid found, you know, like a right. solid ground. You don't want to build a, build this beautiful home on sand Right. And then have it, have it just, you know, wash away or just crumble. So, you know, that whole work that you're doing, you know, going within and really building your foundation. And part of it is even asking yourself, you know what, if I want to work on a challenge, you know, if I want to be able to handle challenges, it's just like working out, David, you and I train. Yeah. It's just like, you know, doing bicep curls. I'm not picking up a 50 curling a 50 before I've done the work starting with a three to five. Right. right. So, um, it's the same thing. Like what little challenges can you do? And again, I'm speaking to you. I'm yeah. speaking to myself. I'm speaking to whoever's watching, you know, on a daily basis, you know, what are the challenges? What little challenge could you face today to actually face it and accomplish it? Yeah. I have a, a saying in my book, you know, it's one of the, one of my words of wisdom. Uh, and it says, pick your heart right. or life's going to pick it for you. Right. I'd rather pick my heart. So one, you know, again, if we're looking at how to, you know, weather the storm, it starts with, again, you being able to work on a challenge and accomplish it. Then maybe you pick a bigger one, then you pick a bigger one, you know, but it's a muscle. 
right. working, work, you know, <laughs> facing challenges, that's a muscle and yeah. we, we get to do it, you know, on a yeah. daily basis if we choose. Yeah. Well, it's actually, well, as we were talking about the book Grit, I can actually see it in my, uh, on my shelf right behind me. I was going to say, I'm, I'm it's like, right, I, I, right there. David, I don't have my glasses on. I can't, we're going to have to like get your thing back there. Okay. Um, but, uh, but yeah, it was, it was one of the, one, one book I really, I really enjoyed. So you know, there, there's something very interesting and, uh, you know, not, not to go off too far off, uh, offline here, but, um, I had this awareness that, uh, when I was dealing with somebody uh, who had a physical injury, um, what mm. I found is that, um, that, that physical injury, anything that was, anything that, that was tight and uncomfortable in the body preceding the injury, actually became a part of the problem. So if I had a knee injury and I had really tight traps and I had a tight lower back and maybe I had really tight caps, well, just the, the stress, the kind of the, the global stress inside the body dealing with the knee injury actually took all those areas that actually had already had some tone, like excessive tone, yes. and they became tighter. So what I realized that that stress goes to where stress resides and it hijacks all these other stress points that, are, that have nothing to do, my traps have nothing to do with my knee. Right, and that I drop that into this into the world of the like mental and emotional stress, and what I was finding, and I found it myself, and then I looked up at the world and go, oh my God, this is what we do. We line up stress like beads on a string, and they, one has nothing to do with the other, but but when one goes off, they actually enlist the energy of yeah. all the rest, and so and so again, when you're looking at a particular problem, you know, being able to take a step back and breathe. And be able to recognize that that the pro the current problem you're contending with, yes, it's challenging, but it's not. But the escalation of it, the emotional escalation, the the panic that comes along with it, quite often, if you're if you're if you have the capacity just to slow down enough, you can see that the there's a layer of other problems it could yeah. be stemming 15 years of brain going. When have we felt this before? When have we been this uncertain, this right. afraid, and those uncontested parts of our psychology just get kind of glommed together. So now you've got 15 years of uncontested stress and now it's showing up as that, oh my God, the world's coming to an end when really perhaps only 15% of that whole experience actually belongs here today. Well, you know, and I, and I love that. And I love that, uh, and I love that you got to, you had that insight around the physical body because again, you're very physical and it's, you know, it's all training. And I, I had something similar um, uh, not again, not with the body, but, but an insight after reading again, another, I love books. I mean, I, I love your, I can't wait to like have you write down all the books that you have to see which ones I don't have. So, but anyway, uh, radical forgiveness, yeah. you know, and, and it's this idea where, you know, we, whenever it was, and I'm not going to go back there. I'm not a counselor. I'm not a therapist. We're not going, I'm not going to go back there, but you know, at some point, at some age, something was said, or we saw something and we grabbed onto it and we believed it and we took it within ourselves. And if we push it down, what happens is life keeps showing us right. situations like, just like you said, I remember feeling that way 15 years ago. I remember feeling that 12 years ago, right? So it's life keeps giving us opportunities to see or, or feel whatever that feeling is. And, and a wonderful technique with that is, is to be able to feel it. Right. And, and again, like, again, in the book grit, you know, uh, you know, you're going to lean it, you know, you get to lean into things or, you know, and, and you get to feel things. And so if you feel something that's coming up, that's rubbing you the wrong way, it's pulling you off your line of peace. Right. It is. And, and to stay on that line, that tightrope of peace, it's like, you got this inner, inner peace muscle going on there, right? That's a tightrope. That's your muscle. Anything that shows up for you, that's like rubbing you the wrong way, that pulls you off that, right. you get to say, oh, thank you. Thanks for showing up because you've now allowed me, I've said this to my boys in my head several <laughs> times when they were growing up. Oh my God, thank you so much for, for that because you've helped me work on my inner peace muscle, right? right? So, so things are going to come up you know, until we release, it's, right. it's like, let it come up and let it release. Right. And, and I know it sounds simple, David, but it's a, it's a rinse and release. It's, it's a beautiful process. Well, and I love the word that you used with to, as you started that conversation was, you know, an opportunity. Yeah. It's, it's not a punishment. We're not being, the universe no. hasn't, you know, it's not karma. You go, what did I do wrong? Right. It's not karma. Not taking a thing. It it's just, it's just life. Life is full of tragedy and challenges, and that's what it is. We're, uh, it's an existential quandary because we're the only mammals know we're going to die. 
Like we're the only ones that know that, right? No right. other mammal knows that. So we're trying to contest with this thing about life. Um, Absolutely. And you know what, what you were, what you were saying about, you know, the emotional piece um, it's, it's so important. I mean, again, if we came into this masquerade t costume called a human being, you know, we came in here to feel emotions and to see, to be able to see our emotions as, as our allies, no matter, you know, they're not positive, they're not negative. I mean, somebody might say being angry is a negative. All of our emotions are just neutral. It's when you start to allow them to control you that that puts you in a position where you start to look at things in a, in a more negative way. Right, right. So again, you know, our emotions are here really to, to assist us. Yeah. So, so what is your practice? So going to this, I mean, no matter how long we've been in the game, right, and we've done this yeah. work, um, we still have to, you know, like you said, we're on that tightrope of peace and we're being pushed and pulled around continuously. Yes. Um, do you have, do you have a, a, a favorite practice that you go to, like, a, and maybe just, one thing that kind of stands out for you that that's your constant the other the other tools may come and go as needed but this is the one thing that really stands out for you sure that is you know david that's a great question and, and i'm going to answer it this i'm going to share this before i give you my one thing okay so here you know you and i we've been on this planet for quite a while right. and one of the things that i love is that we're ever changing right. we're evolving and all the time, even my practices, the foods that I eat, the way I move, the you know who I am, it's always evolving. So that's the same with my practices as far as you know playing in the game, but yet being able to look above and, and look down and learn. So for the moment, that's how I'm going to answer okay, this. Okay, for the moment, I just had hip surgery. Prior to this hip surgery, I was walking. I walked a lot and I would put my music on and I would just, and I would just move. I would get physical and it made me feel good. I was giving that time for myself. Um, that worked for the moment now that I'm not able to move. It's had to change. So I do, it's, it's two things, but one, I love Oracle cards. I love, you know, my tarot cards, but I love Oracle cards. The, the deck I'm working with now, it's called earth warriors. Um, love them. And if anybody wants them, they can certainly let me know and I can put them in contact with who has them. Um, but I, I look at those. I see what messages come through for me there. And then I actually do, I write, I, I, I get a, you know, it doesn't even have to be a journal. Sometimes we say journal and every, everybody thinks they have to go get this fabulous book. I got yeah. these notepads from, yeah. from like staples and I'm like, yeah. you know, and I don't save them. It's, it's like if you've ever made soup, especially a meaty soup, yeah. if you let it cool, all the fat rises to the top and it cools and it's solid and you scrape it off and, you know, most of it yeah. and you throw that out. And now you're left with this wonderful, wonderful soup. Um, so by writing and right. writing through and I'll ask questions, right. you know, again, I use it that way where I'll just write things out to empty out, but then I'll go into this place where I'll talk to my next best version. So I don't know what the answer is to this. Do you? You know, or I'll talk to, you know, I'll have this conversation with my house, but it's this writing process. It's a right. physical, it's a physical process. So right. I guess, I guess for me, I really, I like to stay in that physical realm. Right, right. right. So. Well, well um, you know, and again, it's just, um, there was a, a phrase that I coined uh, several years ago and I called it, it was uh, personal development fatigue. Um, mm. And my, my suggestion to people was, you know, pick a lane, at least for a while. Pick a lane, yeah. pick a practice. Don't 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 have to, if you're if you're new to the game or if you've been around for a while but you really haven't picked a lane, pick one for the next next thirty days and just and make that your practice because they they call it a spiritual practice because it's practice. It, it, you know, yeah. it's, it, it's like anything else. Yeah. It's, it's, you, it's, you got you got to do it more than one day. <laughs> yeah, it, it's sets and reps, sets and reps, right? You know, prayer is right, a practice. Right, right, right. Prayer is a practice. Right. Meditation is a practice. And, and I, Absolutely. And I got to tell you, I love that. I love that. Stay in your lane. Cause again, that, that speaks to me again on a, on an athletic level and um, you know, on a, with, with coaching, you know, we have a term it's called testing it out, yeah. you know, give it, give it a go yeah. um, with no judgment and see how it feels. Yeah, um, and I think sometimes people are, they're a little afraid um, 
but but that's but that's it's 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 how you're looking at fear and again we with this whole conversation we were talking we've been talking about perception how are you looking at something so for for me and I'm, i would like to ask you um i look at fear i call it i call it fuel Right. You know, when I look at body fat, and I don't call it body fat because when I work with women, you know, mostly it's it's emotionally triggering. So I'm like, listen, you got some stored fuel. Yeah. Well, let's use it. Yeah. So so with with fear, I like to see it as the fuel. So when I feel it, I it's my indicator that I go, oh, again, not using this if I'm deciding to jump off a bill, like you right. know, if yeah. I'm if I'm skydiving or something like that, because that's just like I'm not doing it. So, but if it's something like acting taking an action and it's because I'm thinking, oh, someone might not like me for this, right. something like that. I look at it and go, thank you for showing up because you're telling me I should do this. Right. You know, it's the fuel that just gets me going. So it's yeah. all in how you want to look at it. So I'm curious, how do you look at, cause I'm sure even as evolved as you are, you know, and you know, um, I'm sure fears come up for you. Well, they come up for all of us. So how do you look at, what do you do with fear? You know, it was interesting because I started exploring emotions around uh, well, anger and fear were actually two prominent ones because they uh, mm. because they uh, they had this acute they had capacity to create acute awareness, mm. like like instantaneously, like you're yes. aware of everything, or or at least yes. your field of vision, like everything comes in crystal clear, your adrenaline's going, and so what I decided that anger and fear asked simply asked me, look around, what do you think? That, that I love it. Didn't say anything else. It didn't say run away. It's look around and assess, you know, assess the environment. That's what it's for. It's to bring you, it's to get rid of, like fear gets rid of all the white noise that's around you. It says, this thing demands your attention. What are you going to do about it? What do you think? And then if you, and then, so it didn't say run away, it, right? It didn't say cower. It just said, what do you think? There was no decision around it. There was no meaning uh, inherent to the sensation. It was just a sensation that woke you up to your to your current uh, your current environment, and anger was the same thing, and so yeah, so, so nothing so nothing nothing really uh, negative about them whatsoever. But it took me a while to get there because it's especially uh, um, in the, the the let's say the masculine world, right? It just you know you, you know you don't you're told not to be afraid, so you turn the fear into rage, right? Turn the fear into anger, uh, you know, run people over, and uh, you know you become a bully because. Nobody ever told you what fear really meant, right? And be able to interpret it. Absolutely, and I and I love that. I love I love the fact I love the fact that you said it took you a while to get there, because yeah. I think that's what anyone watching us right now, uh, I would hope that they would realize that, you know, if it, it's it's a you know I hate. I hate, I got to tell you, as a, as a spiritual like life coach, I hate using the word journey. I yeah. do because you yeah. know it's we're on a journey. Yeah. You know, listen, we're in the game, people, yeah. right? So yeah. it's you know it's a marathon. It's a marathon, it and is. and and you and you get to, you get to look, but it's a marathon, not to get to the finish because as soon as we get to the finish, we're no longer here. Yeah. We get to we get to take the blinders off. We get to look around. Sometimes with a marathon, the roads are kind of curvy. You know, just right. breathe it all in. Like you yeah. said, you know, really, even if fear shows up, I love, I love how you said that there was no judgment around it. Yeah. I love that, that it was just like, look around. Um, but that's life, you know, look yeah. around and just, you know, ask yourself, what is, you know, what, what opportunities could show up for me in this moment, right. you know? All right. Well, listen, I got a final question for you. Oh my goodness. I'm and, scared. Uh, no, I didn't put the, I didn't put this on our, our pre-list. You here. did not. Now oh. I'm just, I'm oh. a little, wait, uh, now I'm sweating. <laughs> <laughs> All right. One of my favorite authors, Carolyn Miss. Um, and she, uh, so she's written numerous books, uh, uh, books on archetypes and, uh, um, you know, um, and really, uh, you know, she's, uh, she reminds me of this uh, spiritual uh, grandmother, you know, who's just going to, mm. she'll pound you, but she'll do it because she's loving you, right? She's just very, yes, very, yes. very, very straightforward. But she said so in one of her books, um, um, The Anatomy of the Spirit, there was a really interesting uh, part in there. And, it, and the question that she posed to, um, posed to the reader, and I'll pose to you, is that before you were born, you and your, you and your creator were having a conversation and the creator said, listen, Cassie, uh, you know, it's going to be um, you know, in 12 hours, you're going to be, you're going to be moving into the world. You'll be taking your role as a, as a spiritual being in this masquerade suit, and you're going to walk the course of life. Mm. Now, 
as you get to this stage in your life, uh, you know, as you, as you grow, go and grow through life, who do you want to become? Like, what kind of person do you want to evolve into, to grow into? But bear in mind, there's a cost to that wisdom. There's a cost to who you are. There's a cost to resilience. So you and your creator at the beginning of time, beginning of your, beginning of your, uh, of your pathway through life, and you knew it was going to be rough, but what did, what did you ask for? What were the, what were the character strengths or the values or, or the kind of person that you wanted to be? That is, I, I know you're smiling. You're like, I got you on the hot seat, girl. <laughs> That's a great question. Um, and, and it's funny. It brings me back to something that I, I know I journaled a, a long time ago. Right. Um, and I don't know if it's, if it's going to answer it specifically like, you know, the, the who I want to become, it's, it's, it is this conversation that I have with my higher source right. when I am done with this particular life. And I, and I get to stand there and, and I get this high five. I have these chills now. So thank you for asking this question because it just brings me right in. It's such a warm feeling I'm, I've got right now, not because I'm nervous. <laughs> But I get this high five and, and, and my creator looks at me and says, great fucking game. Right. Great game. You know, you played all out. Right. You played all out. You used every gift, every talent, every guide, everything that you had access to, you used. Right. And you came into this world choosing to be inspiration right. and optimism. And you fulfilled that way more than I ever could have imagined. Right. So go take a shower, eat some oranges, drink some water, because you're going to go back again. Because right. that's what you feel like doing. And I just, like, that's how I want this all to play out. Wow. And that's what I saw when, I mean, I had that, I had that conversation when I was probably 20. And... And it was a great feeling. And, yeah. you know, being a, and on a physical level, you know, again, we work with people yeah. not only in the headspace, but we work with them on a physical, you know, to be strong and healthy physically. Right. One of the things, you know, as far as a um, uh, quality that I'd like to have, I would like to be stronger in the fourth quarter of my game than I was in the first. Right. And that's something my dad taught me. He said, make sure you always go out and you run and you work out so that your skills never diminish during the fourth quarter right. because, you know, because of a lack. You, right. know, you make sure you're in shape, you know, enough shape that you can hit that fourth quarter running. Right. 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 So I got to right. tell you, I, th I thank my parents for all the wisdom that they yeah. shared in the many different ways that they shared it. Yeah. Well, uh, you know, and again, and the reason for that question is simply the fact that it just, you know, there's... The, you know, without the, with those challenges, without the, uh, you know, the, the tragedies that are certainly a part, a part of life, without, without them, without any of those things, we would never, we, how could you be compassionate if you never understood, uh, if you never understood right. pain and loss? You know, how would, how would you know, how would you understand any of it? Um, and the inability or the, or the, the not the inability, but uh, the fear of actually contending with our emotions. I experienced this, oh, I don't know, maybe it was six years ago. And mm. the unbottling of a lot of uh, a lot of pent up emotions, and and I know why people are are, are intimidated, because it's fucking hard, like it just. But but yeah. I, but, I, <laughs> but I but you know but it but is. Thing, but the thing is that one thing I I I I think I you know I'm realizing more and more, and it's it's a, it's a really great catalyst for me for this next stage of of, of what I'm who I'm trying to grow into and become is that. Mm if I want to profoundly uh, live a life that's profoundly full of just really deep connection and love, I have to contend. I have to uh, allow myself to experience the reality uh, of, of, of incredible loss. And I have to embrace both emotions in, in the, at the same level because right. it, it, Brene Brown said this beautifully one time and said, you know, if you can't selectively uh, 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 numb emotions, if you numb one, you numb them all. Yeah. You, you, you do. And, and, and to be very honest, David, there was a period in my life when, when I was walking around numb, right. I was just walking around numb because I was doing that. I was, I was just turning off one emotion and, um, you know, and like I said, they, they all turned off and, yeah. um, 
and and it was it I chose I realized that something life gave me a, a life situation right? right to to really look at that and and I I decided that um that I'd rather feel it all right feel yeah. it all than to not feel at all yes yeah perfect well actually that's a great place to end this conversation um you know and yeah, amazing. Thank you so much for uh, well for reaching out, and uh, and I'm glad that we actually uh, uh, we actually well quasi physically connected. And uh, uh, I know I'd hug across. you, but you know <laughs> I'm a hugger. Um, listen, uh, so well, well in our show notes here. Once we're done, of course, I'll uh, I'll put um, I'll put your website and all the contact information if people want to speak to you directly and uh, and uh, uh, be privy to more of your insights and. Uh, Oh, and, thank you. Yeah, and get a better understanding of grit. But it's just, but truly, you know, this this environment is really bringing out the best of all of us. And it's not that, yeah. um, and I think collectively, I don't have all the answers. You have all the answers, but collectively, right. collectively, we'll, you know, we're, we're smart as a community. We'll figure it out and we'll get on the other side of this. And it's a great opportunity. The year 2020 should give us, you know, 2020. So, should give us 2020 vision. Yeah. Abs absolutely. Absolutely. Well, again, thank you, David, so much for inviting me yeah. to share this space with you and share yeah. your community with me. And, and I, I really do appreciate it. Uh, you're very welcome. All right.